So a real quick disclaimer, there's some explicit language in some of the vocals here. I don't want to offend any of my audience, but with that being said, let's jump into it. Yesterday I uploaded a throwaway trap beat to my story. And some of you let me know that it sounded like funk or funk. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I'm still learning. Doing my research into this genre, not only one did I fall in love with it, but I also realized that I'd heard this many years ago. I just didn't know the genre name. So today for you guys, I wanted to cook up something that was a little bit closer to the genre, but in doing so, you guys are gonna need to throw out everything you currently know about mixing music. This video is of course sponsored by DistroKid and we'll have a few more words on our sponsor later in the video. What's up guys, my name is Will and I make music under the moniker Hushchild. I've had an absolute blast over the last 24 hours. I actually ended up making four different versions of this genre and I wanna stay completely transparent. I think with this fourth iteration, I've hit the nail on the head. However, for you guys to use in your own projects or just to dive a little bit deeper, I'm gonna put all four STEM projects over at my Patreon. So if you wanna grab some free stuff, do a little bit of learning, make sure you check that out. So I think by this point, you can already see where I'm going with the overall mix and some of the old heads have probably already tuned out of this video. I think there's some similarities between funk and lo-fi genres in that there's a few varying elements in terms of tempo, rhythms, instrument used, but there's an overall aesthetic which is very in keeping with the genre. So a lot of times in funk, we hear this 808 cowbell sound. The master track or the overall mix is just overdriven to the max. And on most occasions, there's a Memphis rap acapella in there as well. Most of the time in the visuals, you're seeing 90s Japanese drift footage, which I didn't know was a thing, but I'm absolutely all about it. And if you're looking for some artists that give example to the genre, just look at Evil Main, Creepy Main, Weed Main. Basically, if they've got Main and X or Funk in their name, you're probably in the right place. All jokes aside, I've actually had an absolute blast in making these tracks and I have a huge respect for the genre. I'm really enjoying it. I think the main reason for that is that anything goes. There's no right or wrong. I can use samples, I can use MIDI, I can distort the master and just whack a limiter on and nobody's gonna tell me that's not the proper way to mix or record music. So if that sounds like a bit of fun, let's jump into it. I want to give an honorable mention to the vocals in this track. It's not strictly funk, but it might be an interesting thing to use in your own music. On this track, I've actually doubled up the vocals. I've got a lower vocal and a higher vocal. On the higher vocal, I've actually used the uh, phaser flanger device and I've put it on doubler. And you can see here that I'm stretching the time. And this gives some really cool effects whilst the vocal is playing in the track. kind of creates a delay effect and a pitch effect at the same time. By the way, I should mention that there's already a limiter on my master device, so I'm not worried about adding OTT, distortion, amp, saturation, anything. And I would suggest you guys do the same. Don't focus too much on what plugins I'm using, unless you're really trying to replicate a particular sound. I think it's more about arrangement techniques. And the 808 cowbell you can find in Ableton. Just type in 808 cowbell, go to drums, and then go to bell, and you'll find. But this is three or four semitones above middle C. So what you're gonna wanna do is drop this into your project, shift command T, drag this sample into a MIDI sampler device. On one shot, you're gonna wanna transpose this down to C. So that's what you're seeing above and why it's MIDI. So with the 808 cowbell, what I did was add an EQ8 OTT to bring out some of those higher frequencies. You can see I'm really boosting it here. I'm using the RC20 a lot in this project and it's mainly to bring up the distortion in the mid band frequencies. If you don't have that, 
Don't worry, I would drag in either Ableton's amp device, overdrive, or even the drum bus, and just increase the distortion again in those mid-band frequencies. The Valhalla reverb here is just automated on the mix, so as we get closer to the end of the intro, increasing the wet of the delay, and increasing the mix of the reverb. Because I wanted the 808 cowbell to be heard, it's one of the few instruments that isn't sitting in this master effects group. Notice how the master effects is really distorted with the overdrive. I'm distorting it again with the RC20, cutting off a little bit of the extreme lows, extreme highs, and then just bringing in a little bit of sparkle in those higher registers, only a tiny bit, like 10% with fresh air. This is a free plugin, by the way. At the bottom of my project, I just have some effects like the gunshots, the crashes, and the claps. These are all extremely quiet elements, but they were the things that I wanted to be brightest in the mix. Absolutely everything else from the vocals to the drums is inside this master effects group. These are all the things that I'm making more bit crush, more distorted, and a little bit more dull. So here's my drums on their own. This is all basic arrangement stuff, so I'm gonna fly through this really quickly. I'm using the Oliver House Kick from Splice, and this is what my EQ looks like because I wanted to get rid of a lot of that sub bass, so I'm peaking it up a little bit in the higher register. What did I tell you? There's my old friend RC20. I'm distorting those mid-band frequencies, and I've got a limiter there just so it's not excruciating. This was a complete accident, by the way, but I just wanted to add a little tambourine sample, and I ended up turning on OTT and I like the effect that it gave. So that's there the entire way through the mix, but it's super, super quiet. The snare doesn't need to be in a group. Originally it was part of two snares, but I got rid of the second one because it was just a little bit too much. So I'm using the Wonder Girl snare. In my snare group, once again, I'm using the EQ8 to get rid of any of those lower bassier regions. I'm using the frequency shifter, which is not something you see me do much on my drums before, but I'm just bringing that fine tune down. And this was just a quick edit to bring some of the pitch down of my snare. And then I'm putting it in mono with the utility plugin. For the hi-hats, I'm using the murder hat samples from Splice, and these are just in a sampler device. And this is so I can draw in the MIDI values. They look like this. It's a really easy way to quickly pitch hi-hats. And you can see that I've got a really strict EQ8 on there. And the Haas effect, you guys can use sample delay if you don't have this plugin. Just make sure hi-hats a little bit wider in the stereo mix. These decap hi-hats act as a little rattle hat when the previous hi-hat is playing straight. And then underneath that, we have a sunny open hi-hat. And these play on every downbeat. Next up, we have the respace. You can make a respace from two sawtooth waves, bringing that EQ down a little bit and adding a sub or a sine wave. And that's what I've done with phase plant here. Restricted that EQ from being too bright. I didn't want all of that noise. Every now and then I'm just going an octave up before I go down to the next note. And that creates that bend in the bass. You've probably heard this in like drill music before as well. You can use the same technique with an 808. And underneath that and in mono is just the sine wave. So that's just keeping my fundamental frequency here and giving all of that bass weightiness. So I've got this really basic serum preset. I got it in pads and then I use centipede. and it's side-chained with the compressor. You won't normally see my compressor looking like this. My ratio absolutely maxed out, my attack and my release brought all the way down. My look ahead is on one millisecond. And that's tied to the kick. And that's how you're getting that bouncy feel. In a nice, bright, maybe pop music mix, this would be clicking and it would sound really harsh, but because of my master effects group up here and my master track in Ableton, it's making sure that all of those clicks and pops and harsh frequencies are kept way, way down. Like I said, guys, forget everything you've learned about proper music mixing. We're just having a bit of fun. I've used the Decent Sampler, which you've seen in my claustrophobic piano video and my Idealism lo-fi video, just to create a little distorted lead line. I've tried to move in semitones as much as I can in this melody because that's what I'm hearing a lot in some of the funk songs that I listen to. 
Finally, I used a device called Splitter to create an acapella out of a 1993 single called Skinny Pimp. <laughs> if you're not aware of what Splitter can do, I've made a video on it previously. It's a super powerful AI plugin, really interesting, but I wouldn't recommend using it for any copyright or pirate material. I kind of put it into a double time tempo and then just chopped up the vocal. You can see that I was really strict with the EQ here and I just used a glue compressor to kind of bring everything together. Again, it doesn't matter about the distortion. To create an intro, I pitched down the 808 cowbell, increasing the reverb and the delay as you saw in the beginning of the video. I soloed some of the instruments and I created a riser out of white noise and this creates a nice back and forth. Once you've got your basic loop, you probably want to break this up by muting some instruments for just one beat, adding tape stop effects or beat repeats to create little unique moments, just like I did in my Instagram post. If you're really strict on yourself with your mixing techniques or your music theory, I'd suggest trying out this genre because I think it brings a little bit of playful fun back to music creation. If you enjoyed this video, you learned something new, do make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, because next week's video is going to be super, super beneficial and it greatly helps out the channel. Now, I wouldn't advise ripping a Memphis rap acapella from the 90s and then putting it out on streaming platforms because I don't want you guys to get in trouble. However, if you make an instrumental like this and find a collaborator, the best way to share your revenue has got to be through DistroKid, who's today's sponsor. I use DistroKid for releasing all of my music material. And when I work with other artists or collaborators on a track, I use their splits function. You see, splits makes it so easy for you to share the revenue of your track. And if you're working with somebody that did the majority of the legwork, you can also make sure that they get paid first before anybody else gets paid fairly after. If you're looking to release your music on DistroKid, make sure that you use the link in the description below as you'll get a 7% discount. And as I mentioned, the stems to my not so successful projects and the two beats that I'm really happy with, the one from my Instagram, the one we made today, are all available at my Patreon. I've also included a playlist in the description below so you can check out some funk music of your own. Let me know what you wanna see in the next video. If this was enjoyable, helpful, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already because next week is gonna be a really, really beneficial video. And I'll see you next time.